This video will be an honest review of the GPS tracker made by Track Active. We'll be putting this device to the ultimate test in the hills of the Lake District and the fields of the Yorkshire Dales. This tracker will be worn on both Suki and Paige for the sake of the video to put it to its ultimate test to be able to test every inch of the device and its app that it comes with. The device will be worn both on the farm when they're working on the day to day and out on the fields when we're ferreting or bushing or even on walks up the lake district and stuff where the dogs tend to wander a little bit further bushing and stuff like that and the cat hear us as well and we'll see how well it responds. We will also be testing it, we'll be hiding it and testing it, seeing how well we can track it actually in the dales and in the middle of nowhere in the Lake District. Hopefully this will be a tracker that we can put on the dogs and they can wear while they're working and while they're not working and we can rely on it. There's so many good trackers that are out there for dogs, especially for dogs that are working that are just way too overpriced and we can't afford them. So we've got high hopes for this and we'll be putting it to the test. So we'll dive right into it. This is the box, this is what it looks like when it comes. This colour is snow. Has all your app details there and how to download it. Also has all the information on the back, all in different languages. And we'll get it open. comes in a little box like this. As you can see I haven't opened it yet. We'll get it open. So this is how it comes. Has little instructions here which is quite smart. The actual tracker itself. which we'll look at more in a second and then I guess this is the charger charger St stickers for the um, I guess for the device to stick it on my name is and um, please call and the quick start guide Oh, a couple of, oh they're all in different languages. So that's all it comes with. We'll take a look, a close look at all these. So this is the actual device itself, it's quite small, it's very light and it'll fit perfectly on the dog's collar, it's not big and heavy, it's not going to wear the dog down. This is the charger, it clips onto the device like this, so it's magnetic and then you push. That's how it clips on. So that's it clipped on. It's quite sturdy. Clip it off. They like the magnetic feature. Then you just plug it in. Just need a half decent plug to plug it in, otherwise it does take hours to charge. And I mean like 15 hours to charge. That's what I've learned. Well, that's the charger. Has these little uh, clips to hook onto the collars so it goes around the collar and clips back on. And with these little stickers, four of them, stick on the collars 
I guess in case I get lost. Stick on the device in case I get lost. Kind of the reach the old point of the tracker, but it's a nice feature. Again, charger, magnetic. Quick guide, which we'll have a look at in a second. And the information, which there is a lot of. Alright, so when you get started, first you got to charge it for two hours, it says, but I don't currently have a plug to plug it into, so we'll see if we can do it without charging it. And I believe this is the activation code that you need. Right there. This is the device. It says to download. Download it. Use the activation code. And then attach it to the collar. Still going to try to do that. That's what it looks like. Already have your device. Yes. I'll just quickly sign in and come back to you. Right, so I think we're into this tracker. Select your home country. Yes. So we're onto this page now, and I do actually have a code. Let's see if we can have a prepaid activation code. There we go. Mm -hmm. So the tracker's been activated now. Tell us about your pet, so it's just a setting up. Uh, we'll do Suki. Just to make life easier for us. So we have the photo of Suki. The type, she's a dog. Birthday. It's the 25th of November, New software available. Start update. Now we're currently in a container on the farm. So we'll see if it can pick us up from here. It's got 81% charge. Location history. Also it can map everything. Which is always good. See where Suki's been on the day because she does often just disappear and go do her own thing. You can share it all. So no available history. We've just bought it. We just turned it on. Account. You saw your account information. Profile.
Or you can you can set up virtual fences so when they leave the area it gives you an alert. That'd be very handy if it works for me at work. And you can add other people. Which I guess would be really handy if uh, you had like a dog walker or like family that come and look after your dog or take your dog out. So you can add different pictures on there. Tracker, virtual fences, power saving zones, lights and sounds. That is very smart. We'll change this. Oh, you can change it to 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes and 60 minutes. We'll keep it on 5 minutes. Active mode. So you can earn points daily and stuff like that. So we did have the pit pat that originally came out to measure our older dogs how much walking she was getting and so it does exactly the same as the pit pat does. Which again I guess is handy if it's a dog walker that's coming and walking your dog and you can see actually how much walking they've actually done. Dogs like Suki tend to get exercised. Well, Suki's out all day, every day on the farm with me, so she gets a lot longer than that, but we'll leave it at that. This is another thing I was worried about, was the lurcher collars and how they would fit. This is Suki's collar, as you can see. It's very dirty. She has been on the farm. Handmade by Paul Sullivan. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit. I was worried about this. So we'll fit it on here and we'll see what it looks like. Right. So, ideally, we'll put it on this side. Okay, that has worked a lot better than what I thought it was going to. I was really worried because of the difference in thickness. It it would slide, but it's it's not sliding at all. No, I think that'll be able to fit. Tell you what we'll do, we'll move it to that side actually, so that the lead doesn't live on that. Just hook it off. Fits like a glove. Absolutely brilliant, I'm really impressed with that. not heavy at all it, it's not much heavier than the collar I mean it, do, it shouldn't add that much weight we'll put it on Suki and we'll see how it looks that's how it looks on Suki she doesn't seem too impressed <laughs> doesn't look like it's it'll cause any obstructions or anything when she's out and about but again we'll see we're not gonna go lightly on it <laughs> looks completely fine the actual price for the tracker itself that's just the tracker is £44.99 and it is a s subscription based device you get two subscription options the first one is your basic which is £12 a month or £72 a year and your second one is your premium 
which is it just it doesn't come in a month it just comes in a year and that's 84 pound a year now there is a big difference between the two the premium gives you world coverage family sharing 365 day location history and gps data export personally i would say it's worth going for the premier one that's just my personal opinion i think i'm pretty sure i'm on i'm on basic now but i would go f next year i would go for the premier one like the pit pat and everything like that is it is a subscription most of them are subscriptions now except if you invest in the sport dogs and stuff like that the the big devices that aren't app based that you actually get the remotes with they're just buy outright but they're normally 600 pound plus for a unit so it does say it takes three hours to fully charge i haven't found that i found that it takes five to six hours and that's with a decent plug a really decent plug if you use a plug that isn't a good plug it takes 15 hours plus to charge which is very annoying when the battery is at 100% uh, it does tend to last me personally five days and that's with the power saving mode and what that does is when the dog goes back to the house you set it so when the dog goes back into the area that you have set it shuts down to the basic features and goes into power saving mode so you can't live track and stuff like that it does alert you when your dog's left the area if you set it so it does that but it will last about five days with doing that obviously when she's sleeping and stuff like that at home she, i'm not going to need to track her i know exactly where she is if she leaves that it'll go off power saving mode and I'll be able to track her again. With power saving mode off, or if if she did get lost or anything like that, I would say it would last about two days. I mean, when we go out for a walk, if we do a full day's walk and it's on 100%, it tends to go down to about 55, 50%. So if you lost your dog, I'd say you got about two days to find it, maybe a day and a night even. But it should give you plenty of time but it's it could be longer it could be a lot longer especially if you've lost them in the hills and stuff like that it, it does tend to be a lot harder to find them so that that that's one slight downfall the battery length could be a lot longer but i guess that's to do with the size as well to keep it that small i've been using this now for about two three months and the battery has stayed quite consistent like five days with power saving mode and i would say one or two days without power saving mode i mean it's not a bad device for your money the battery could be a bit longer but buying a semi-cheap device when it comes to tracking devices especially for your working dog there is a lot more out there that doesn't work off gps it comes with a remote itself it's his own unit it doesn't work off your phone and they do tend to last weeks but again they are a lot more expensive they come with a separate collar unit so you have to have the separate collar on you can't connect it to your own dog's collar and it does come with a separate remote you can't connect it to your phone now the app features with this this is something that i did want to talk about most of the app features are quite good but there is one app feature that does really annoy me and it's when it's tracking your dog's miles so even if you got in the car and drove 100 miles somewhere else it would track their mileage as your dog's miles so unless you were to turn the device off when you left the house and then turn it on once you started going for a walk, you won't actually know how far your dog went. That is one of the most annoying features that I have found, is there's no tracking the miles of your dog, unless you turn the device on and off when you go for walks. I'll just show you that now on the app quickly. 
So this is what I mean by tracking the dog's miles. So if we go into history from yesterday, let's do it. Had an operation on Monday, so the dog didn't really go anywhere. But we'll change it up. So we'll do it from Sunday. Apparently the dog did 53 miles, 53.58 miles. So it includes every time you drive anywhere. That is the biggest downfall I think about that. It does say how many calories your dog's burned if you go into wellness. It says how many calories your dog's burned, how many minutes they've been active. And sleep doesn't really, I take the dog's collars off when they get in the house. Sleep doesn't really count. It has all your local leaderboards. Suki's 27 on that. So it'll be exciting to see what this wellness score is. It says Suki Stracker has not been used enough. Been using it for about a week now. So I don't know how long you've got to wait until you can use it. We'll soon see. Activity. So I had my operation on Monday, so she hasn't really done a lot since then. Sunday. Like a leaderboard. Doesn't seem to be working, I can't get onto it. Oh, there we go. So this is a local in my area, Suki's 27. You can add friends. Breeds, this is all the lurchers and global. She is in the work area, so if she goes outside that, it does alert me. I would say the miles is the biggest downfall for this app. The app itself, that is. I've been on quite a few walks where I've had little to non signal and I walk five minutes away and I can get signal. Like, that hasn't been a big deal yet. Another feature that the Track Active does have is virtual fences. So with virtual fences you can create a boundary and when the dog goes out of that boundary it alerts you or where it, when it comes in it tells you that the dog's coming into the boundary. It is a very, very smart feature, and if it worked properly, it would be amazing. But the problem is that I found, because I've set, I've set three or four different ones, when they go out of the fence, it takes about five, three to five minutes to actually alert you. So by that time, your dog could be half a mile away, especially if it's chasing something or... If someone's stolen it, it's a long time for it not to register. But it is a very good feature and if it worked properly it would be amazing. Suki. Went ratting all night last night. Suki had the tracker on. Covered in chicken poo, but it stayed on. And it recorded everything despite it being no service. I do have to say the only downside is it on the history, it records you driving and adds it to her miles, which is very annoying. As yesterday she did 120 miles, I think it was. But wait, that's the only downside, really. Uh, 
We're up in the middle of the hills today. I've got one bar of service. Uh, and it seems to be tracking all right so far. So we'll wait until we get right up to the top and we'll try it again. Got one bar. We'll see how long it takes to track her. There's us. That's it. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Still nice and secure. She's just going to go down there with Suki. If Suki will go with her. And then we'll see how it works up here. So this is us on the top of Potterfell. See if we can look at her. Can't start live due to bad connection. Right, so it's working now. Just a bit off, five minutes from where I was originally, and it's connecting. So we'll just hope that Suki stays down there. So that's where Suki is compared to us. She's obviously running back up, yep, here she is. Running straight back to us. I mean, it's, it does work off GPS, so you do kind of expect these things, but like I've just had to walk five minutes from where I was originally, which isn't far at all, and it, it's shown exactly where she is. Like, it could be better, it could, could work everywhere, but then it wouldn't be a GPS tracker. It's good for what it is. That's where Suki was over there. And I was right up the top there. This is the track active after six months of use. You'll have to excuse my dirty hands. We've just been out and about today. I've literally just taken it off. So I do have to say it's held up astonishingly well. A lot better than what I thought it would do. Especially when out and about hunting. It's got a couple of scratches. But it's not that bad. Another thing I want to say is not once did the strap come off. That was my biggest concern on a lurcher collar that is curved and it's got different thicknesses it didn't come off once it didn't slip it didn't move i was actually very impressed by the whole system because I, I did think it was going to be terrible so downside is the service issue being able to track your dog 
when you don't have service and you can't connect to the app but like I say you only have to walk five ten minutes away and get service if your service good I mean I haven't tried it in the middle of Scotland I've tried it in the Dales and I always seem to be able to pick up service five or ten minute walk away the other downside I do have to say is the battery time now this was this was the biggest downfall for me I think the battery on it uh, does last a while if you have like a power saving zone which is your house it'll last a couple of days but if you're staying away like if you're staying in a hotel or you're staying out on a hunting trip or anything like that it goes within within a day so you have to keep charging it every single night every single day which is a bit of a nightmare do i think it's worth the price as something small if it's on the collar and day-to-day -day activity like if it if it was if you were somewhere if you were going somewhere where you had service and you were going back home every night and you were in a power saving saving zone yeah it's it's good for the price if i was picking something and i was going hunting in the scottish highlands for example i, I wouldn't pick this i would pick a proper set with a remote and the full nine yards you do think it's cheap when you get it compared to the big collared ones but when you add it up it's it's going to be like two three years with the track active will be the price of a proper tracking collar with remote But again, the proper tracking collars with remotes, the big, the heavy, they don't just slide on your collar like this does. Charging ports as well. The charging ports always need to be kept clean, otherwise it doesn't charge.